Hi, my name's Kieran and I'm an intern at KISP Space. This summer, I've been working on ways to make small satellite design more effective. And I'm also coordinating a student CubeSat project in my university. So I thought that today I'd share with you some facts from my experiences. I hope you enjoy. When working in the space industry, you'll often hear experts use terms like small sat, micro sat, or even pico sat. But how small actually is small? I thought I would give you a short guide to keep you right. CubeSats are spacecraft that are made up of cube-shaped building blocks sized at 10 by 10 by 10 centimetres and weighing no more than 1 and 1 third kilograms each. Each of these blocks is called a unit, or 1U. CubeSats can be 1, 2, 3, 6 or even more U in size and can also function on their own or even as part of a constellation. Small satellites are typically classified as being between 100 and 500 kilograms, although this can just be a catch-all term for anything less than 500 kg. Microsats are typically between 10 and 100 kilograms, although confusingly again, this can just be a catch-all for anything less than 100. Nanosats are between 1 and 10 kilograms, and you can even get picosats, which are a kilogram or less. Something that people aren't always aware of are the reliability issues associated with CubeSats. In 2017, it was found that almost half of the CubeSats launched by Academia failed at the start of their mission, something that is known as being dead on arrival. Even in industry, only three quarters of CubeSat missions were successful. This is a trend that desperately needs to be mitigated by any budding CubeSat developers and goes to show why considering having a foolproof redundancy strategy is always a good idea when it is possible to do so. Those were three quick facts that I hope you found useful about small sats and cube sats. Thanks.